Uh, I'm David Versus. I'm from Budapest, Hungary. I'm a sophomore. My major is finance and accounting, and I'm a grandmaster. Good afternoon, y'all. My name is <laughs> David Versus, and I'm going to like show you a game from a recent uh, competition, which was played between the uh, uh, University of Belgrade and University of Texas of Dallas, which is an annual, annual competition, and we managed to win, luckily, uh, after four, five years. So I played. It's a rapid uh, tournament, 40 minutes plus uh, 10 seconds increment. And this was played on ICC, so it's not in the databases, so it's worth watching it. All right, so uh, I played against uh, Shalen Shivan. He's like, his feeder rating is 24-20. So he's a decent player. So I started knight f3 because I didn't want to go into my main d4 lines because he probably prepared more than me. Knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5. So he's a constant, like constantly a Grimfed player. So it was kind of easy to prepare against him because Grimfed players they don't really play anything else other than g6, knight f6, and d5 setup. And I chose a very popular sideline here, which I which I had played before a few times. Queen b3. So with d4 here we can transpose to the main line, but obviously that was not my goal. So I played queen b3. Knight b6. So here, other options like c6 is just is just weak because then probably just e4 and d4, and I can conquer the center and white is better. So the main line is knight b6 and d4, bishop g7, and I played e4, which partially like transposes the main line, but it's kind of like favors white. It's like it's a better version for white. And the other move is bishop f4 here, with the idea to play e3 and rook d1, bishop e2, and castle. But it's more like positional approach, and I wanted to go for a more sharp way, so because that fits my style better. So I played e4, and he went bishop g4. Okay, that's the main line here. Other alternatives are castle, and then comes bishop e3, bishop g4. And white comes in time with rook, rook d1 and is able to protect d4 pawn. And okay, obviously it's another game. And here comes knight c6, d5, knight d5 is the main line here. So he played bishop g4. Obviously, bishop takes d4 is kind of greedy. It's not as ugly as it looks, but it's not that good as well. It just takes, takes, and probably bishop a6 to prevent black from castling. And then the rook comes into play, rook d1, and white has, I believe, good compensation. Obviously, not lost for black, but it just looks better for white. So we have bishop g4. Obviously, he wants to quest, uh, challenge my knight on f3 so that he, he could play knight c6 and take on d4, which would be very bad for black, obviously. So here, for instance, if I play bishop e3, then I'm not on time because he just takes and takes on d1. And after rook d1, he can protect the bishop either through c5 or e5 and then just play knight c6 and black is perfectly fine. So the main line comes, bishop b5 check. This is a, it, this, at the first sight it looks kind of weird because what's the point of if, if black goes just c6? But as theory says, it's, it's not bad. So what do you guys play here? Well, this is still theory. Yeah. Knight g5. Yeah, very strong. Yeah, knight g5. So now you obviously black cannot take on b5 because then queen takes f7 and, and then takes the bishop on g7, just wins the pawn. So the only move is castle and bishop e2. So the main idea if now black has to move the bishop. So either bishop c8 or bishop takes e2. Either way, it's, it's kind of dangerous for black. So the main line comes to bishop e2. For instance, if he goes back to c8, which makes sense as well, because now d4 is like attacked twice, and white is not able to protect it. Because after bishop e3, then bishop d4. So. What is your what, are, what is your suggestion? How how should White grab the initiative and 
page four. Yeah, that's correct. It was a long theory. Uh, <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, in this type in this type of positions, when the knight is not on f6 and it's kind of far from the king side, it's, it's a typical idea to try to make benefit of that and play h4. Yes, sir. What are other options for white other than h4? Yeah, I mean, obviously maybe bishop e3 or, not, or just knight f3 back to f3, but it just doesn't Is make it sense. Is possible to take on d4 after bishop e3 or no? Yeah, rook d1 and e5 and knight f3 and c5 and it's... Yeah, for instance, if I go bishop b3, bishop d4, rook d1, and probably just c5. And white can still play h4, obviously, has to find a way to compensate for the pawn, but, but it's just not enough. So h4 is, 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 is very strong. Because if he takes on d4, for instance, let's say with the bishop or the queen, let's say with the bishop, then simply just h5. and. It's, I don't really see like defense for for black because I can just play knight d1 and jump my with the queen to g3 and then h4 and it looks deadly for black and there 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 have been some games on high level they came like this knight f3 bishop g4 and everyone played uh, bishop e3 but there is a stronger move here. Or white, which is a novinka. Hmm? If that's an option, what's the? What was that? Yeah, he said just ninety-five. Yeah, that's interesting, but it doesn't have really any force threat. A4. Yeah, but then it just takes or just plays A5. So, and then what? And then what's, what's the idea? And G6? <laughs> yeah, H5 is actually very strong. So um, there are some games even on 26 level, and they didn't find that. It was just, I just analyzed it. So this is minus so H5. Yeah, I mean, for instance, if he plays go, black goes g4, then just knight takes g5. g5 takes, takes, and takes. And then next move is like queen g3. Black is not, is behind development. So it's just, there is like great, it's almost winning for white. It's a winning attack. So where he has to go, rook, bishop takes, but then probably just the best way to now play knight to e5 or just, I don't know, or even g4. I, I, would, I would just... What are your thoughts on rook h5? Rook h5. Yeah, it looks nice, but I don't see how to, I, I don't see the follow-up. Yeah. We should be three now, long castle, and build up the attack. Yeah, probably I can just go knight e7 and knight f6. And okay, there is some po position of compensation, but position of compensation is usually not enough, in my view. But, but I don't see the point of probably just, I would say maybe knight g1. I would play knight g1 here, honestly. And then, which is kind of ugly. But what about knight h4? Knight h4. Yeah, but I, 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 do, I, don't, I, don't, I want to keep h5 open for my rooks. So for instance, the idea, if he takes on e2, I may just take with this knight and then free my way to the queen. I can just jump to h3 or g3, and now the h6 pawn is hanging. And after g5, maybe f4. I don't know. I, I mean, I, fav I favor white here. I really like white's position because it's easier to play. And black, black is still behind. Like he has to move the knight and then the rook and the queen. And there is only one piece that protects the king side. So it should be good for white. So yeah, h5 kills this, this line for black. So 
other than that, but I cannot really prevent h5. So, of course, the main line, the best move is bishop takes a2, knight e2. And that have been several games as well here. So, and he plays c5 That's immediately, so he, he knew the theory. So, the most games happen uh, after knight e6, but it's not good because getting queen h3 and h6, knight f3. Do you think, guys, is there enough compensation here? Or <coughs> so the lines come like knight b1, 4, and then king f1, and h5 because h6 is hanging, and then just g4. Queen d7, rook g1. And although at the moment there is no like direct threat, but I want to play queen h4. For instance, knight after knight c2, I might even play queen h4 and just don't care about the rook because the rook on a1 doesn't really play, doesn't have any role. And if it takes, it just takes here. And even though why is it rook down, I don't know. I don't, I don't really see a difference here because the knight, knight g5 is coming, h to the g6 and knight g5. And I don't know. These are the position where white shouldn't care about the material at all. So, yeah, and all, for instance, if that goes queen d7, probably just queen h4 again, and h5, and now not rook g1 because then queen g4, so now h3, and then g4 with the same idea. And I cannot really do anything against this this plan. And now knight c2, maybe just rook b1 and. It's it's good. Like white won all of all of the <coughs> games here. So I was hoping f for this to happen, but because it's not like a well now. I mean, it's more or less well known, but it's, there have been only a few games for for this team. I like two three games, and like 27 players played it as well. So for instance, if, if black goes just h6, then knight f3, and that's the whole idea. And then knight e7, and just castle, and it's like a side side. Side dash for why this is then a4, bishop e3, rook e1, rook d1, and it's a nice edge. Can you please go to the, the previous slide again? The one that finished 3 and g4. This one? No, uh, where you played the finish 3 g4 and knight c2, knight a1. Which rook g1? Which rook g1? This? What about bishop f6? Yeah, probably then just bishop g5. <laughs> just take on h5 again and I don't know. It's kind of dangerous for black. It's probably losing. Hey, g4? Hmm? Take on g4? I don't know. He's probably losing for black. Somehow, like, take, takes. Yeah. <coughs> what if I just take, take, and say knight f4? Uh, and next move is knight h5. Probably. <laughs> okay, you can give up your queen any time, but it seems just okay. With the knight on the a1, probably is not enough. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's losing. Here. So unfortunately, he knew the main line. He immediately played c5. Of course, black has to seek for some Counter, counterplay in that side because on the queen side, on the king side, is, it, it looks kind of weird. So c5 takes knight e7, queen b7, and now queen a5 check. Of course, it's kind of evident. Bishop d2 and queen a6. So of course, I cannot take on a8 because the knight c6 and the queen is going to be much better than the two rooks because white just cannot castle because of knight on e2. Hanging. So, 
So here white has to go for this trade. So takes and c6. I think there was a game where c6 happened. Queen takes, take takes. And bishop c3, I believe. But I didn't find it sufficient for white. So I asked for the main line, takes c6. And luckily, he played knight e5 immediately. We probably mixed some lines here. But the main line comes bishop b2. That's the, I mean, basically, not only move to fight for equality here. Rook b1, and now knight e5. So the, rook, the bishop on b2 is untouchable because of knight e3 check. So, yeah, now white has the castle, and it comes like rook b8, and then bishop f4. And surprisingly, the only good move is rook c8. Of course, this b2 is not hanging because e2 is. The bishop e5, knight on e2 is hanging as well. And now knight f3, f6, and this will transpose to this kind of boring end game where white is slightly better and he can like grind for like four, four hours and try to win. And okay, it's a little bit easier to play for white, but it should be equal if black plays precisely. Luckily, my opponents kind of mixed it up and played knight f5 immediately. And after I cast it, he started thinking for like 10 minutes or 15, probably realized that. I was surprised that because since we played an ICC, he didn't ask for a retake, like, re like, pre like retaking the moves. So <laughs> that would have made sense, but. So now he played rook b8. I mean, if he takes on c6, then probably just bishop c3. And OK, white is now winning, but it's a healthy pawn up. And I can like. Try to massage black here, it's a long, it's a long way, but <laughs> not easy. So he played rook b8, it was kind of interesting. So now, of course, I have to go bishop c3, and now rook c8. He tried to ca the capture the pawn with the rook, so try to keep the active piece on e5, that, that his only active piece is, that provides the compensation for black. I mean, there is slight compensation, it's not like too much, but in a rapid game, it's anything can happen. So. So I played rook d1, it kind of was, made sense, but maybe it was not the best. Rook c6, and here I played rook b1. I just want to protect all my pawns in, in case he jumps a knight. And, and the computer suggested f4 here, which I honestly didn't like. So the idea, if he jumps knight c4, and bishop takes, takes, and just solid b3, and Although my knight on g5 is not doing anything, the next move is going to be like knight f3 and knight fd4. And white is back to the harmony. So it's, it would have been nice, but I, during the game, I was afraid of h6 a little bit, honestly. And now if he goes knight f3, then he, ta then he takes. And bishop takes. And I can't recapture the knight because b2 is hanging. And that's why I played rook b1 so that my pawn on b2 would be protected. So, and computer suggests bishop e5, but I found this pawn structure very woody for white. So I don't really like, it. I mean, it's still a pawn up, big pressure, but okay, engine is engine, so I'm, I'm a human. So, so I play rugby one. So if he goes h6 now, then I can just play knight f3, take the and I can take, and uh, pawn on b2 is protected by my rook. And that was the whole, I the deep idea. So, so he went knight c5, which is, which is evident, because he wants to activate it, like his knight. And I went knight f3, because I didn't really find any other moves here. So now, of course, he's going to take on e4. And he, he played knight c4, which was a sly mistake. So the engine suggested knight takes f3, takes, and knight e6, or something like that. And OK. It's like some compensation, but still a long way massage here. So.
which he didn't want. I think he wanted to keep as many pieces as possible to like keep the position complicated, which was not complicated at all. He just thought. So nice C4, takes, takes, and I mean probably he missed B3. Which is kinda unpleasant because now at the first time it looks like okay my two pawns are hanging on B2 and E4. And it looks kinda weird, but after B3 it's just like I don't know. Like it seems worse, close to lose, lost. So he went ninety six. Of course, the whole point was if he goes here, then rook c1 and just pin the knight c5 so he cannot take it because this rook is kind of hanging. And my next move is knight fd, knight fd4 and f3, and then I'm safe. So it's good. So he went ninety six, and I play e5, which is the only move. He went ninety four. He tried to remain active. Go back here. Active. Yeah, so knight f 4 rook a6, I play f3. Okay, from now on it's kind of like kind of straightforward. Knight g5, knight c3. And I was, I felt so comfortable here. It was incredible. Because now he can't, he can't create any complications anymore. And he's, he's knight on g5, he's not doing anything. So finally, I reached harmony here. After 27 moves. So he went 96 and ID too. Yeah, so I'd like his his knights are restricted. He can jump on F4, like nothing. He can do nothing. So rook B7. From here we just move because we are both low on time since it was a rapid game. So the the, the moves from now on may make no sense and apologies for that. So F4, H5, G3. I like this chain of pawns. So rook B6. Knight e5, rook c6, rook c1, a5, king f2, rook a6. Like to centralize a king, one of the main principles in endgames. Now rook c4. So if he goes a4, then I just push b4, obviously. So he play knight a6, here take, take, and knight a4, f6, take, rook d5, so I can take with the rook. King f7, rook c6, my f8, take, take, rook d6. And of course, it's not that winning. It's just hard to defend with black, especially in, in time pressure. And white is a pawn up, so it's much easier to play. And of course, when you're long time and have been under pressure in the whole game, you crack. It's evident. <laughs> Here king f3, and he went rook e6. And here I started thinking, and I had to be cruel. <laughs> I enjoy grinding the game, but now it's like, okay, it's, <laughs> it's time to finish it. And then rook e6, and he's, I think he lost some time, and he lost the position as well. So yeah, I just wanted to show this game because it was a nice event, and we, we managed to win against the University of Belgrade. And I think from a theoretical point of view, it was interesting. And it's worth analyzing more deeply this, this position against Grunfeld, because Grunfeld is very dangerous lately. And it's hard to find advantage. And I think this line may be one of those lines. But of course, it's. So that was my game. Thank you for your attention, y'all. Mm -hmm.